Hi everybody, today we are going to show you how to access your Steam Deck formatted micro SD card, external flash drives, all within the safe comfort of your Windows operating system. Copy over ROMs, copy over BIOS files, pre-build your SD card before your Steam Deck comes. All of this and so much more is coming up. Stick around. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we are going to be using a tool called Linux File System for Windows by Paragon Software. This is not a free package. For this tutorial, you must purchase the product. The product is 20 US dollars. And once uh, you get this, you'll be able to sign into your Paragon Software account and you will have a working product. So you can't use the trial, you can't use the demo, you must purchase in order to use this tutorial. Once you do have it all done, set up and installed correctly and signed in or registered, you will see that when you run the software, it'll actually have the name of the account here in the corner. Otherwise it'll say log in or register. I can't remember what it was. Uh, it's been a couple weeks, but once you see this or your name, you'll know that you're ready to go. It's telling you right now that there's no volumes available and that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and close it and then we're also gonna exit it from the sys tray at the bottom. You can also, of course, bring it up and find it in your sys tray and hit exit. All right, so now we're gonna make sure that that's not running and you have downloaded and installed. Before we continue, make sure that you're all done with that. You purchased it, you registered it, and it is ready to go. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and um, open up my file manager and I'm going to plug in a fresh 64 gigabyte card from SanDisk. It just showed up as O, and you can see that there's nothing on the O drive. If I go to properties, you will see that it is indeed an XFAT. It's fully formatted, and there's nothing on it, which is exactly what we want. Now, before we can get started, we need to know what drive number or disk number this is. So we're gonna go to the computer management console which uh, you just go ahead and hit Windows R, bring up the run box and type in compmgmt.msc. That will go ahead and launch the computer management console. And we are interested in the disk management. So I'm gonna double click that and it's gonna populate. Now this can take, as you can see here, a really long time. We're gonna time compress it as it enumerates all my volumes. I've got a lot. So we'll be back in just a moment when it's done. Okay, so that took a long time because I have many, many volumes, as you can see. So what we're looking for is we need to find out what this O drive is from a disk ID or disk number perspective. So you can see disk zero, disk one, disk two. If we scroll down, we're looking for something that is 64 gigabytes and is the O letter in this case. And here we are, we have it. Disk nine, disk nine is the volume that we're looking for. And I'll, you'll understand why that's important in just a minute. Okay, so disk nine is the one that we need. We can go ahead and close. And we are now ready to go ahead and open up the Linux file system for Windows. Okay, so now use the three dot menu, select format new volume. And now you'll understand why we were looking for the disk number, because none of these, unless you happen to know the volume and some other stuff, it would be very difficult to make sure that you had the right one if you have tons of volumes like me. So knowing that it's disk nine, I am now safe to go ahead and choose that as my, uh, as my drive. We're gonna change this to ext4, and we're gonna just call this Steam Deck to give it some sort of a decent name. And we're ready to go, we format. Now we're going to go ahead and show the details, and this takes a little bit longer than your average format. So it's going to go ahead and do this, and it's going to create a Steam Deck compatible formatted micro SD card. Now, one thing you'll find out is once it's formatted in EXT4 format, it is basically invisible to Windows. If you plug it in without Linux file systems for Windows running, uh, you will find that Windows has no clue what to do with it. And you probably have already figured that out because you've been trying to do something like this. That's why you're here for this video. This tool, this Linux file system for Windows, provides us with three functions that we really need. One, we need to format our drive into the proper format, ext4, and we need to be able to read and write to this volume for it to be uh, super convenient. Now, there are other tools, free tools, that will let you read from an ext4 file system, 
Obviously, that's not very helpful for you because what we really, really, really want to be able to do is um, download, say, a large game from our PC uh, on our PC, faster computer, faster network, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we want to copy that directly onto the micro SD card that was formatted by the deck without, you know, running any risks of corrupting the data or doing anything terrible to it. Uh, okay, and it's done. Perfect. So now at this point in time, hey, it has now mounted this EXT4 file system on drive P. So if I go back into my file manager now, and I hit P, look at that. There's a lost plus found folder. And if you're familiar with Linux formatted drives, lost plus found is a folder you would see on there. Well, all right. So we've now taken the jump. We now have a properly formatted EXT4 micro SD card. All we need to do now is some, put some stuff on it and we can move it over. Or we could literally take out the SD card from our deck and pop it in here. Let's do that real quick so you can see what that looks like. I'm going to eject my one terabyte. I'm gonna unmount this. I'm gonna eject it. I'm gonna stick it in there. And let's see what it says. All right, there we go. So I actually, uh, yeah, there, there it is, my one terabyte drive. It's now on S. If I look at S, hey, look at this. It has Steam apps, stuff that I've installed on my deck. It has all my emulation stuff, right, for EmuDeck. It's all right here, my ROMs, my BIOS. I know what you're thinking. How cool is it now? Now you can copy those ISOs, those really big files over. You can just dump them straight in here without having to do some weird file to copy across the SSH, without having to use an intermediate drive to move things around. It's, uh, it's great. There's that lost and found folder we were talking about along with the trash can. All right, so you can see it definitely works. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing this over and over again, and I'm going to be stating it over and over again. We've all gotten used to a point in time where we can just take removable drives out without worrying about ruining anything. Remember the old days, those of you who've been around long enough, remember that when you had SD cards or flash drives, you always had to unmount them first or risk data loss. That's what's going to happen here. If you do not unmount every single time you change, you will have problems. Always unmount your drive. Always unmount your drive. Always unmount your drive. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and unmount my drive. And again, it's going to, uh, it's going to, um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and unplug that. All right, perfect. We have unmounted it. And we're ready to put our 64 gig card back in. There it is. Perfect. Excellent. Now we're ready. So go back to our P drive, which is empty. Now I am going to go to my uh, Steam folder, or one of them, rather in the upper. Now I'm going to, I'm going to recommend uh, you use directory opus for this. Uh, you don't, you don't have to, obviously any file manager will do. Um, but I implore you, uh, we're going to be doing some stuff inside of directory opus. That's only possible inside of directory opus. Uh, you can use the same techniques, but this is just a lot easier uh, to, to do this sort of batch copying that we're about to do. So we're going to go ahead. Um, I'm going to, you can use, directory opus is not free. In fact, it's rather expensive. Um, but I will tell you that um, it is absolutely the best file manager on the planet, regardless of the operating system. Um, so this is it. So grab yourself a free trial. You got 60 days to use this thing. And believe me, once you use it for a task like this, you'll be going, I need to have this software. All right. So what we're going to do is in order for us to use this drive inside of our Steam Deck, we need the base Steam Apps folder. We don't need Steam. That's implied. So we're going to make a Steam Apps folder that's common. So we, what we need are Steam Apps a Steam Apps folder with common inside. Now, here's just one of these little great things that Directory Opus lets you do. We're going to make a new folder, and we're going to call it Steam Apps slash common. It's going to create Steam Apps, and it's going to create a common for us in there. So now we're in the same place. I'm in Steam Apps common, Steam Apps common. Down here is my SD card. This is the hard drive on my PC. So I'm going to grab a couple of games. Uh, let's see, what sounds good? A couple of smaller games I think would be great. So let's grab um, Metal Slug X. Let's grab Pumpkin Jack and The Raft. 
And so we're going to grab those three games and we're going to get them started copying over now. Okay, so um, we've got these copying and maybe uh, we decide we want to add maybe one more, like say, you know, Tron 2.0 is uninstalled, uh, but we could add another one if we wanted to. Uh, this is good for now. We'll let that go. While this is copying, we need a few things. We need to know the Steam app ID of each one of these games. All right, so we're going to open up the Steam database, SteamDB, and we are going to figure out what those IDs are. So one of them was the raft, okay, Steam ID. So I'm going to go ahead and open up just a little, a little, uh, I'm going to open up a tool here. I'm going to open up a text editor, Boop. and we're going to paste that in there. Oops, grab that, copy, paste it in there. This is for the raft. We, you know what, we don't really even need to say what it is. We just need to know what they are. So we need metal slug X. Okay, Metal Slug X is that app ID. And what was my last one that I selected uh, to copy over? Uh, Pumpkin Jack. Okay, so let's go back there and get Pumpkin Jack. Okay. Uh, big one. Newer game. Newer game. Bigger ID. Where'd my, uh, where'd my window go? Yeah. So these are the three numbers that we need. These are our app IDs, and I'm going to show you why we need these in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and move this over so I've got some space here to see. We no longer need, uh, we no longer need our browser, so I'm going to get rid of that. We just need these numbers here. Perfect. All right, so this is still copying over. It says we've got about four minutes to go. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, while we're finishing here, and this is why I want to do this uh, using directory opens because it'll stack copy operations. We are going to, um, so first off, let me show you something that's really neat about directory opens. One of the things that just blows my mind, it's called navigation lock. And essentially, if I'm in the same subfolder in two different locations, like this is my hard drive and this is the Steam Deck, I can hit navigation lock. And anytime I change folders, it'll automatically change the folder below. So if I go into common up here, it automatically sends me to common here and so on and so on. It's just one of those neat little quality of life things that once you get used to having stuff like this, you'll never not want to have it. Uh, okay, so we're going to go back to Steam apps and we're looking for manifests, app manifests that match these three numbers. Okay, so we're going to find these three IDs, six, four, eight, I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm going to click the first one, hold down control, three, one, two, whoops. Three, one, two, six, zero. Oh, hold down control. And you now we've got multiple select going on here, right? Standard stuff. And 118, 118, 6640. So I've got three items selected. I'm going to go ahead and hit copy. And it's now queued. It's queued the jobs so that I'm not trying to slam the SD card, right? So this is what I'm talking about. So you could literally say, oh, well, I need another game. I want another game. While I'm, while I'm thinking about it, I want to get another game. So let's get, uh, I don't know, let's get, uh, I don't know if I've got another tiny game in here. Um, uh, let me see, uh, Traffic Jams is pretty big. Let's see, do I have anything small? I don't know. Anyway, um, so you could add another one and then add another one, then add another one, and it will queue the jobs up so that they don't run simultaneously which is important when you're writing to an SD card, because if you get too many threads going over there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to slow everything down. But as you can see, if I look under here, it shows my next copy job are three files, and it gives me a, a quick listing of what those files are, as much as it can fit, and it's going to tell me where it's coming from and where it's going to. So I can go ahead and now go have a little sandwich. Uh, I can go get something to drink or whatever, knowing that it's going to finish all the copy jobs that have been queued up. Now again, you can use whatever file manager you want. You don't have to use directory opus, but I find that directory opus is extraordinarily useful for tasks like this. And I find new tasks to use directory opus for all the time. So while this is finishing up, let's, let's talk about what we've learned here. So we've learned that we need to pre-format our micro SD card into uh, ext4, which is complements of the Linux file system uh, for Windows. We need to format it. We need the proper file structure which is to have a folder called Steam Apps. Within that, have a common folder. And within the common folder, we're going to copy over our already downloaded games from Steam. We also know that we have to, it, we have to find the app manifest that matches that in the Steam Apps folder and copy those over 
properly, which of course they're not here yet because they haven't run. We have another minute and 30 seconds uh, before the next job runs. So this is how we, for those of you who have asked the question, I've got a Steam Deck coming. I want to prepare my one terabyte card ahead of time. I want to have that thing packed to the brim with games so I don't have to waste any time. I can plug the card in and immediately start playing games. That's what you want. This is exactly what we're doing here. Now, you could also do this to an existing card, right? So if you've been using your Steam Deck uh, for months and months and you want to be able to just quickly add some gigantic game, right? Like something huge, like say... Horizon Zero Dawn, which is 72 gigabytes, or something even worse. Uh, let's see, uh, one of these is huge. Black Ops 3, which is 124 gigabytes. It, to, to copy these, you're going, I'll just copy them over to another flash drive, and then I'll copy them over to my micro SD card off the deck. Now, why would you want to do that? That takes forever. You know how long it takes to copy 124 gigabytes across SSH, or to copy it once to a flash drive and then copy it again from the flash drive back over to your micro SD card? Absolutely ridiculous. This is the methodology you want to use. Now, listen, if you're talking about uh, some little tiny game like uh, you know the Karate Kid or or one of these other tiny, 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 tiny games, it'd be super easy. You know what? Let's grab. Uh, uh, well, I've already got Core Keeper installed. That's not a fair test. Yeah, this will be done in just a moment. So you get the idea of what we're trying to do here. And we're all doing this in Windows. We're doing this in a comfortable operating system that we probably already have sitting here. All right, so it copied the other files. Let's go take a look. We have our three game files. We go to Steam Maps. We have our three manifest files. That's it. We should be good to go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and flip over, uh, flip over the video to my Steam Deck. All right, and I'm going to go to my library. I'm just using a mouse here instead of the touchpad. Just easier while I'm doing this. And you can see right now that our installed games are two. I've got two games installed, uh, Spin Rhythm and this uh, Shadows Awakening. I do not have my main primary SD card in here. And if you were to go to, uh, to Storage, right, you can see that um, I only have my internal drive. And you can see what's installed on it. And I have no micro SD card. Okay, so we're all good there. Let's flip back over real quick because I want to stress this one more time. One more time I need to stress this. We're not done yet. We must unmount, unmount, unmount. Right? Say it with me. One mount, unmount. Unmount your SD card before you try to take it out or bad things happen. Hit unmount. Good. How do you know it's unmounted? Because the card disappeared. You see how directory opens? It's like, I don't even know where anything is. You've, you've done, you done lost me. I got no card here. I don't know what I'm doing. So it's done. And you can also take a look at it here where it says mounted is no. No, no, no. Now you're safe. Now we are safe to take that card out. And we're going to go and put that card uh, in our deck right now. Let's see how we do. So I've taken the SD card out. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the deck. Whoa, whoa. What do we got? What do we got? Hey, now, look at that. We plugged it in. And we had to do nothing. We did nothing, and all three of our games are sitting here ready to go. Let's jump back to our library. Oops, back to Steam menu. Let's go back to our library. Installed as five now. Check it out. There we go. They're here. And let's go ahead and take a quick run here. And we'll hit play. Now, you may see it downloading content. That's not, that's not unusual. Right. So even though you've done all the work ahead of time, it could still be downloading shaders. It could still be downloading prerequisites. Um, you're not you're not downloading the game right now. Do not panic. This is working as it's supposed to. It's probably downloading shaders. It could be downloading a number of different things. And you can go ahead and look at your downloads maybe and get a peek at what that might have been. But we were too late. But it picked up 53 megabytes. All right. Uh, and then it's going to run the game. And again, like I said, you could see it installing prerequisites or something of that nature. So don't panic. It's actually working. We'll, we'll go look at one of the bigger ones here in just a second. Okay, and there we go. Metal Slug is, is go. All right, so let's go look at a larger title. Let's get out of here. Let's exit that game. Let's look at something where you I couldn't have sneakily downloaded it in the background when you weren't looking, right? Because uh, trust but verify, am I right? 
Uh, Pumpkin Jack is like six gigabytes, as I recall, something of that nature. You can see that it's all sitting here ready to go. We're going to go ahead and hit play. And, uh, oh, DirectX launcher or play Pumpkin Jack. Let's play Pumpkin Jack. And there you go. No uh, Proton compatibility or any nonsense required. The game just ran like a champ. And that was like six gigabytes. You would have seen it if it were downloading something funny. You know what I'm saying? There you go. Good to go. So in reality, you could you could set up your you could set up your one terabyte card completely with all of your Steam games ready to go and absolutely do nothing except for maybe download some shaders, right? Or maybe a couple of prerequisites. Um, let's go back and do the raft. Where'd that go? There we go. Let's go ahead and get the raft. We'll play that. Oh, good. Nothing like a EULA for a game. You, We own you. We own everything that you ever make. If you do anything in the raft we don't like, we're going to kill you. Okay. That's not what it says, folks, just from a legal disclaimer point of view. Nothing in that EULA said they could kill you. Now, remember, when you download the game through Steam, it does a lot of funky stuff already for you, like grabbing shaders, maybe setting up prerequisites, proton compatibility. You may find situations where you, uh, while it doesn't look like it's starting to launch, much like Metal Gear Slug did, you may have to go in and set some compatibility, or you may have to wait for it to grab shaders. Again, there's a couple of different things that could uh, stall. But see, this one, this one finally picked up. It's telling you you're going to have to use an on-screen keyboard. And we are good to go. Welcome to the raft. Perfect. All right. Excellent. All right. So um, for those of you who are, are quick pickups and you've got all this, um, thanks so much for watching. For those of you who are not, we're going to run through this one more time real, real fast. Um, just to talk once again to recap what it is that we've learned. So for the rest of you, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, blah, blah, blah. Everybody else who just wants to kind of have a little recap, uh, let's do that real fast. Um, so what, what did we learn? We learned that we need a, uh, a, an SD card that has uh, a, an EXT4 file system, which is provided to us by the paid version of Linux file system for Windows, right? We've also, remember, we must always unmount our drive when we're done. We can pick up all of our games from our locally installed Steam games in the common folder and copy it over to our SD card. We also know that we want to pick up the app manifest by using the Steam database to search for the game that we may want to copy over, like say the forest. All right, let's say we did the forest. We would need that app ID and, you know, we'll make a little note of it so we can copy all those app IDs over. Uh, and then once we are done and we have, uh, we have got all those files over, we're going to go ahead again and we're going to make sure that we unmount, 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 unmount. And then we're going to plug it in to our Steam Deck and make sure that it picks it up uh, inside of our storage, right? So we're going to go back to settings. We're going to look at our storage one more time. Uh, we're going to sometimes, I, sometimes I'll admit it. Sometimes I plug in my SD card and it does not show up. It doesn't show up. Uh, I'll unplug it and I'll plug it back in again and then it shows up. This does happen. But uh, we'll definitely go into storage after we plug it in, and we'll make sure that the games that we copied over show up. Now, let's say you copied a game over. You're sure you copied the game over, but it doesn't show up here. What could you have done wrong? The answer is what you did wrong is you forgot to copy over the, uh, you forgot to copy over the manifest file. Right? You forgot to copy over the appropriately numbered manifest file over to the card. It's not the end of the world. You don't have to start over again. But once you are on your, in your Steam Deck, uh, you'll want to, uh, you could just go to the library again. And instead of, instead of having to take your card out and putting it in your PC or whatever, just go find the game. Uh, let's say that we had copied over the forest, right? That's a, uh, one of my favorite games ever. Let's say we had copied over the forest right? Uh, it's in our library, uh, but it's not installed, right? So you'll hit install and it'll ask you where you want to put it. You, you select, um, in this case, it's going to automatically go to my SD card. But uh, if you were in the, um, if you were in the desktop mode, right, it'll ask you where you want to put it. You point it to the SD card where you've already copied it over. And all it will do is discover the files. It won't have to download them and it will automatically pick them up and go. So you won't have to download, but it will pick up shaders and other stuff like that. Okay. Well, I think, um, I think that's about all we need to talk about here. I think uh, we're in really good shape. 
you know what to do now. You can uh, use this. Um, you can use the Linux uh, file system for Windows to actually uh, access your micro SD card. It'll mount it as a regular drive. Let's go ahead and throw one in here, just as a little recap. Right, you'll plug in anything that's formatted as EXT4. You'll get a, uh, a volume assigned to it, which in this case is S. You'll be able to go into your S drive, uh, copy over ROMs, BIOSes, clean up games you don't want anymore, big old ISOs or CHDs that are up there taking up your space. Um, and uh, there's all sorts of neat stuff that you can do, say, with directory opus, right? Uh, this is just a little bonus thing, right? So I'm going to right-click on this, uh, this name sorter. I'm going to go to More and I'm gonna choose options, and I'm gonna say get folder sizes automatically, right? And so what it's gonna do is, is it's going to walk the file system and show me uh, uh, hierarchically sort of what, what's, what's my highest amount of storage, right? And then if I drill in there, it'll calculate all of those folders so I can see my Uplay folder is my biggest folder along with Call of Duty Black Ops 4. If I go in there, I can see that Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Far Cry 6 are both clocked in at about 77 gigabytes. And I can go ahead and tidy things up. Oh, I'm done playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Let's get rid of that. Um, so yeah, this is just another one of those, those nifty little uh, directory opus goodies. You can also do something called um, uh, flat, uh, flat file systems or flat folders where you can actually show... Um, like if you were looking for particular files, right, you could actually say, I want to see them grouped by folder, and it will read all your subfolders for you. And uh, it will show you, this takes a little while because there are a lot of folders, but you can actually sort of look at your entire drive hierarchically and see sort of where the files are in each one of those, right? You can also turn that completely off and just do a full-blown mix to no folders. And now you can literally see what is the biggest frickin' file on my SD card? And that's located in the Days Gone Ben Games con uh, content packs. So this is the biggest file I've got. Next up would be Far Cry 6's Worlds. Uh, do I have Far Cry 6 installed here twice or what? I got, uh, looks, oh, that's just two different files. So you can see uh, how, how easy it is to actually find things uh, or by type, right? Maybe you want to find CHD files. So you can sort by type. We'll look for CHDs. All right, those would be my hard or my um, uh, emulation ISOs, right? So let's scroll back up here. Configuration settings. All right, so here are my CHD files. I got Einhander and uh, Gauntlet Legends in my um, Dreamcast and PlayStation One folders, right? So uh, Thrill Kill in the PlayStation One, right? So very useful tools uh, paired with, of course, the Linux. Uh, the Linux file system for Windows. Remember, unmount, unmount, unmount <laughs> before you take it out. All right, listen, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, feel free, point others, leave comments. Um, help me build this channel, help it grow. It, it, it grows only by, um, by great viewers like you, engaging with the content, um, maybe adding some of your thoughts and comments in the description below. I will leave uh, links to the, the tool we're using here, along with Directory Opus. Um, and you can uh, pick that up if you like. Again, remember there's a free trial, so you can try all these cool features uh, yourself for, uh, for free for 60 days. Okay, that's it. Right. This is Shane Armonroe. As always, thanks so much for watching. Take care.